Voice change after the thyroid surgery is a very very common problem. But do you know what causes this voice change? What are the types of the voice change can happen and are these voice changes temporary or permanent? What can we do to prevent this voice change and what care we need to take so that your voice change can remain a temporary? And if it turns out to be a permanent, how can we avoid it and what are the treatment options available? If you don't know, then stay tuned with me because we are going to discuss that in our today's topic. Namaste. My name is Dr. Tanvi Mayur Patel. I am an endocrinologist, a hormone specialist doctor from Mumbai, India. One important information before we continue this video is that if you want to watch this video in Hindi language, then on the i button and in the description box, there is a link. If you click on that link, then this video will be played in Hindi language for you. अगर आप इस वीडियो को हिंदी भाषा में देखना चाहते हैं तो ऊपर आई बटन पे और नीचे डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स में एक लिंक है अगर आप उस लिंक पे क्लिक करेंगे तो इस वीडियो को आप हिंदी भाषा में पाएंगे सो लेट्स कंटिन्यू अवर टुडेज टॉपिक एंड दैट इज अ वॉइस चेंज सी थाइरॉइड सर्जरी इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट कॉमनली परफॉर्म्ड सर्जरी ऑफ द एंडोक्राइन डिजीजेस एंड इट इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इफेक्टिव सर्जरी फॉर प्लेटी मैनी थाइरॉयड इश्यूज However, one most common complication, or you can say side effect after the surgery, is a change in the voice. And the moment we talk about the change in the voice, people have lot of fear in their mind. They want to know whether this voice change is going to be temporary or it is going to be permanent. How can we avoid it? What kind of a voice change can happen? That's all we are going to learn and know in today's topic. Okay? Now see. Before we talk about the voice change, it is very important for us to know that what makes our voice. See, our voice is a very, very personal attribute to one's personality. In fact, when we talk, how we talk, it represents ourselves. So, when we talk about the voice production, a very important structure comes into play is the larynx. Now, larynx is a small anatomical uh, area which is located in your neck and a mouth area. So, in this larynx, we've got a lot of muscles, what we call it as a laryngeal muscles. And when this laryngeal muscles works in a coordination with our brain, where we have a speech area, together they produce a voice. When we talk, the air which enters inside our respiratory area, this air vibrates the vocal cord. Now these vocal cords are very very important structure and when the vibration happens, a some kind of a resonation of the sound creates and it is this resonation of the sound contributes to our voice. Right? Our voice is also controlled by two important nerves. In that the very first nerve is called as a recurrent laryngeal nerve. It is this recurrent laryngeal nerve which controls the movement of the vocal cords. And the second nerve is a superior branch of the laryngeal nerve which controls the tension in the vocal cord. And due to this tension, the high pitch voice is mainly contributed by these nerves. Now, why this is important, I'm discussing right now. Because both of these nerves, they lie very closely to our thyroid gland. And that's the reason why when we do a thyroid gland surgery, there is a very high possibility of changes happen to these nerves. Okay. Now, let's see what causes the damage to these nerves. See now this damage can also be a mechanical damage. So during the surgery, our neck is in an extended position. So many times due to the neck extension, there is a compression, there is a pressure which gets created that can also cause a nerve damage. Second way of a nerve damage is because of the heat. Now what happens during the surgery, there is a chance of the blood loss. And to prevent this blood loss, 
your surgeon doctor is going to use a special kind of a instrument what we call it as a cautery and what they do they apply the cauterization and that causes a sealing of this blood vessel and because of that the loss of the blood is minimized many a times this heat cauterization can also cause a damage to the nerves another problem what happens that if before the surgery if your thyroid gland had a huge goiter or a huge cancer and because of that also the pressure around the nerve can happen and that can also compress and that can also cause a change of the voice so this is also possible okay sometimes after the surgery there can be a swelling or a internal inflammation of the nerve area many a times the effect of the general anesthesia can also give you a temporary swelling around the nerves and in a very very less likely uh, situation during the surgery if any of these nerves have been cut by any chance this will later on lead you into the paralysis and that can also cause the voice change so these are the various ways by which these nerves can get damaged and can lead you into the change of the voice now another question a people usually ask is that is this change of the voice will it be temporary or will it be permanent see most of the time if the damage is a very mild or then in that case the voice change will be a temporary but yes if there is a a cut to this nerves if that happens then in that case this damage can be a permanent and it can be difficult to regain the voice what you had prior to the surgery now let's see what type of the voice change can happen see if the damage happens to the recurrent laryngeal nerve in that case you might experience some change in your voice like a hoarseness of a voice sometimes as i told you earlier the hoarseness of voice can also happen even before the surgery if due to the enlargement of the goiter or the thyroid cancer if the recurrent laryngeal nerve is already compressed in those kind of a situation the patient has a very high likely of having the change of the voice even after the surgery secondly if the damage is happening to the superior laryngeal nerve in that kind of a situation the change can happen is a loss of the projection of the voice now what do i mean by that so see if there is a very noisy background and in that case when you have to speak louder that may not happen sometimes if you are into singing then when you have to use a high pitch voice that can also not happen if your superior laryngeal nerve is damaged now let's see that what are the general voice advice which you can follow so that your voice change can be a betterly dealt with see after the surgery we always tell the patient that uh, you use your voice to the minimum unless and until you have a need to talk keep your conversations very brief whether it is over phone call or whether it is one to one okay second is that you need to speak little slowly and you articulate a very clearly give your voice some kind of a rest so do not land up into continuous talking to keep a short intervals many people have a habit of using our voice in a very alternative ways in terms of the coughing in terms of the clearing the throat in terms of the belching okay so if you are using your voice for these means you need to again uh, re change your habits drink lot of fluid especially if possible of warm water so that your voice can be improvised again we also advise a person to use a humidifier when you use a humidifier it makes you easy to talk so these are the general advices which you can follow for a recovery from a hoarseness of the voice very commonly asked question is that how long does it take for you to normalize your voice 
say usually after the surgery uh, the voice resumes back to the normal within 3 to 6 months however this depends on a plenty many factors it depends what kind of a thyroid surgery was performed whether was it a total thyroidectomy or a partial thyroidectomy second it also depends that what was the procedure performed whether what whether it was a conventional thyroid surgery or it was it a latest uh, advanced thyroid surgery it also depends that up to what extent the damage to the nerve had happened it based on all this case the time duration for the recovery varies however in a normal scenario it usually takes three to six months so you need to have a patience during that time and you need to follow the general voice advice which i just told you okay but in spite of that waiting period of six months and if you find that your voice is not improvising and it is not coming back to normal in that kind of a scenario you might need a voice therapy now before you undergo a voice therapy a very special kind of a procedure is performed what we call it as a laryngoscopy in this laryngoscopy we try to understand the movement of the vocal cords and this movement of the vocal cords is usually divided into a very specialized grading system called as a GRBAS scaling. Now it's GRBAS scaling it stands for R stands for the roughness so we check the roughness of the voice. B stands for breathiness, A stands for asthenia that means the weakness and S stands for strain. So based on this GRBAS scaling which rate your voice and this voice is graded from 0 to 3 wherein the 0 being the normal and the 3 being the most abnormal so once we do the grading of your voice then we decide that what kind of a treatment will be suitable for you many a times it can be possible that a laryngologist doctor might give you a special kind of a medicated injections into this vocal cord or the innovating areas Sometimes a very special kind of a mediastinal thyroplasty surgery is also recommended. Another treatment which is still much into the experimental zone is that when we are going to re innervate the nerve supply to the vocal cord. So what we do is that if the nerve was a cut or a dissected, so we try to join this nerve ending with the another functional nerve. So that can also help in a voice bringing back to the normalization. So these are the certain techniques which we usually use. Another question, can we prevent this voice damage? See, prevention of the voice damage up to an extent is little difficult because some of the other change of the voice is inevitable after the thyroid surgery. However, when you use a very experienced thyroid endocrine surgeon or an oncological surgeon, your chances of a damage to the nerve is minimum. Again, nowadays we have a very special kind of a monitoring system which is used during the surgery which can help us to distinguish the area of the thigh these nerves so that the damage is minimum but yes the damage which happens due to the after surgery swelling or inflammation or the anesthesia induced up to an extent are not possible and that is the reason why change of the voice after the operation is a very very common but yes, 3 to 6 months is a maximum time period you need to have patience before you jump on to the any other treatment. Now, again a very important part of the further treatment is the voice therapy. Now, before we advise a voice therapy, we always tell a patient to wait for this particular time period so that the natural recovery of the voice is possible. Again, this voice therapy is not done in a one sitting. You might have to undergo a multiple sessions for this voice therapy. And this voice therapy is usually performed by either the audiologist or a voice speech therapist, a specialized a paramedical staff or a doctors. So they will be able to help you out in a recovering of your normal voice. All right. I hope 
after watching this video you got some good useful information and if you like the video please click on the like button and if you are new to my channel then please don't forget to subscribe so that you get more and more health related information and by the way this video is actually a part of our thyroid surgery playlist so if you are planning to undergo a thyroid surgery then do watch those other videos pertaining to the surgery wherein i have talked about what is this thyroid surgery what are the types of the surgery who are the right candidate for the surgery how the surgery is actually performed okay how you have to take care of yourself after you go back from your hospital what all discharge advices you need to follow what are the possible complications you need to watch full for and what are the rehabilitation exercises of your neck you can do for a speedy recovery all right so if you are planning to undergo the surgery please watch this entire series so that you will get a maximum knowledge so that you are mentally prepared to take care of yourself after the thyroid surgery and yes if you have any of your personal question whose answer you are seeking for please write it in the comment box i try to read them and answer them as early as i can and if you have undergone a thyroid surgery what was your reason of undergoing surgery and what problem did you face after the surgery please write it in the comment box so that many other viewers just like you will also get a benefit from understanding that all right we will meet again in some new other video with some good useful information till then take care of yourself namaste